So how do you go with finding the solution to our bicycle problem? Well, if you haven't found one yet, I'd like you to go back to the previous video and have a go at finding a solution for yourself. In this video, I'm going to have a look at two of the ways that we could use to find the solution to them and discuss the benefits and limitations of each way. So where should we start? Well, the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use trial and error. There's nothing wrong ever in mathematics in using trial and error. In fact, in this particular problem, due to the simplistic nature of it, trial and error is probably the quickest method that I'm going to show you, simply because the solution isn't complex. To use trial and error here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply list out the combinations that exist of the number of bicycles, the number of tricycles, and the number of wheels to that combination. Now remember, we've got 11 total cycles in our problem. So if we didn't have any bicycles, it would mean that we would have to have 11 tricycles. Now to determine the total number of wheels for this combination, we know that there's no bicycles, so there's no wheels for that. Each tricycle has three wheels, so we need to multiply 11 by 3, so the total number of wheels will be 33, which isn't what we're looking for. What if we tried one bicycle, which would mean that there'd need to be 10 tricycles? Well, we'd need to multiply our bicycles by 2, so there's two wheels here. We'd need to multiply our number of tricycles by 3, so there'll be 30 wheels here. And that will mean that we need to add the 2 plus the 30, which will give us 32 wheels. We then repeat this, listing all the combinations that are available until we find the solution that we're after. I'm going to go ahead and do this. So now I'm at the point that I've found the solution. I could continue listing out all the combinations, but I've found the solution of the number of bicycles and number of tricycles that must be in this display window. So the solution I've found is there are eight bicycles and there are three tricycles in the display window. So as you can see, we found the correct solution using trial and error. But there are some limitations to this. Could you imagine doing this with a problem that had thousands upon thousands of possible combinations? Or could you imagine trying to do it with a problem that didn't have whole numbers, didn't have nice, easy integers? Something that's much more complex. Well, this method would be fairly limited when it comes to that, to finding accurate solutions. So what do we do when we've got that sort of problem? Well, Let's consider the original question for a moment. We know that when we add the total number of bicycles with the total number of tricycles, that it should equal 11. So let's let x represent the total number of bicycles and y represent the number of tricycles and represent this problem algebraically, where when we add the number of bicycles with the number of tricycles, it will equal the total number of cycles, which was 11. We can do the same with the total number of wheels, except to calculate the total number of wheels, we had to multiply the number of bicycles by 2, so 2 times the number of bicycles. Then we need to multiply the number of tricycles by 3, so it'll be 3 times the number of tricycles, and we had to add them together, which gave us the total number of wheels that we we're looking for, which in this problem was 25. So now, what I've done here is I've actually represented our original problem as a set of two equations, which we call simultaneous equations. And what I'm going to do with this next is actually find what's known as the graphical solution. So let's go and do that. So here we've got our two equations where the x is representing the number of bicycles, the y is representing the number of tricycles. The first equation, when we add them together, will represent the total number of bicycles. And the second equation, where we multiply the number of bicycles by 2, because of two wheels, we do the same with our tricycles, but multiplying by 3. When we add those two together, we'll get the total number of wheels. What we're going to do here is I'm going to graph these two lines onto the same set of axes, the same graph, and then we're going to investigate what that actually shows.
Okay, so now I've graphed these, let's explain what this actually shows. This blue line's representing all the combinations that actually exist of bicycles that we could have. And this pink line represents all the combinations of wheels that we could have with our bicycles and tricycles. Now, when we actually graph it like this, we can take a special note about where these two lines actually intersect. So this, right here, the point of intersection. Now the point of intersection will actually show us where these two equations will actually equal the same. So let's have a look at what is our point of intersection. Well, the x value is equal to 8 and the y value is equal to 3. So what we're saying is the solution where these two lines cross over with each other, known as the point of intersection, is 8, 3, where x is 8, y is 3. But back to the original problem, x is representing the total number of bicycles and y is representing the total number of tricycles. So what the point of intersection actually shows between these two lines is the solution to our bicycle problem. So, therefore, there are eight bicycles and three tricycles in the display window. Now, I know that we've found the right solution because we actually found this through trial and error. But this is just a second way that we can find the solution to this. The upside of this solution is we can actually visually represent and visually see where the solution of these values are. There are some limitations to this though. The first limitation is it's time consuming. You've still got to draw this graph and then find the point of intersection. But the main limitation to this is it is restricted in how accurate our solutions can sometimes be. Now, in this problem, we're only dealing with whole numbers, but where we're not, this has a big limitation that we're going to struggle to find accurate solutions where the solution isn't a whole value. So what do we do about those types of problems? Well, luckily for us, there are a couple of other ways that we can use these equations here to find the solution to the problem. And that's what we're going to have a look at in the next couple of videos.